Welcome back to the fourth video in this series, Not-for-Profit and Public Sector Organizations. This topic is on accounting for donations. Donations to NFPs are recorded based upon the type of donation, and there are two main categories, capital assets and materials and services. The key difference here is that an NFP must recognize the donation of a capital asset, whereas materials and services are not required to be recorded. When a capital asset is donated to a not-for-profit, it must be recorded at its fair value. And if that fair value is not determinable, then a nominal value will be used. Nominal meaning something typically between the range of $1 to $1,000. If a capital asset is received that the organization will not use, it is reported as other assets, as it would not meet the specification of a capital asset. And regardless of whether it will be used or not, a gain or loss must be recorded upon disposal of a capital asset. For donation of materials or services. When a donation is made up of materials and or services, the organization can choose whether or not to report the donation. And if the choice is made to report the donation, it must both have a fair value that is determinable and be able to use the materials or services in its normal course of operations, and otherwise would have had to purchase said materials or services uh, for their operations. That being said, typically the value of volunteer labor is not reported due to the difficulty in determining the fair value of said labor. I mean, think about it for a moment. If you have a whole bunch of well-meaning humans uh, donating their labor, putting their time and energy into your organization, and you were to value them at their labor at say $12 or $15 or $17 per hour, and perhaps they are individuals that think their market value is somewhere in the range of $50 per hour, $75 per hour, $250 per hour, Anyways, uh, there can be a lot of hurt feelings. Remember, it is the type of materials or services for that operation. So if you have somebody, you know, um, going door to door and raising awareness for your organization, how do you value that? What is a like service? So all that to say is because the value of volunteer labor uh, is really difficult in determining its fair value and we don't need to report it, it just typically isn't. Not-for-profit accounting is multifaceted, it's somewhat intricate, and there's a lot of nuances involved. Uh, these four videos are meant to serve as a platform and really a start and an awareness to how to set up the books, what type of funds are available, uh, what type of methods can we use to record, what type of transactions might we see, uh, but really it goes on and on and on. As you'll see with one of my guest speakers, Claire, who articled at the zoo and then at uh, Theater Calgary, you can really make a career out of specializing for not-for-profit accounting. It's hard, it's tricky, it's nuanced. Uh, you are dealing with people and you are serving a purpose. So I hope that these four videos, again, have provided more so of an introduction, more so uh, that base level knowledge. And if you are interested, I'd say the best way is to get involved in a local not-for-profit close to you. Maybe get involved in the operations, donate your time, uh, or get involved in the accounting. I'm sure they'd love to hear you. Time for a question. Second Cloth is a not-for-profit that typically buys clothing secondhand from consignment vendors and distributes clothes to individuals in need of assistance. It receives a donation of several hundred winter jackets from an outdoor clothing company. Winter jackets are normally a part of the organization's procurement program in anticipation of giveaways during the colder seasons. The organization is A, is required to recognize the donation. B is not required to recognize the donation, but may choose to do so. C is not permitted to recognize the donation. Or D is not permitted to accept the donation. What do you think?
The correct answer is B. The not-for-profit is not required to recognize the donation, but it can if it meets two criteria. Since these materials, the winter jacket, would normally be purchased by the not-for-profit, and because a fair value can be determined by referencing what the retailer would normally sell them for, the entity can choose to recognize the donation. All right, everybody. Um, I'll be linking to two comprehensive walkthroughs in Brightspace in a separate module under your mini lectures, one to account for each type of transaction under the restricted fund method, and one to account for each type of transaction under the deferral method. I highly recommend reviewing both videos prior to going on to the tutorial video and then attempting your connect, connect assignment number three and for sure prior to term test number three. Great work. Thank you so, so much for your time and attention this series of videos uh, this whole semester. Have a good one.